Simon's mother-in-law lay consumed by a fever, which in those days didn't mean that she was physically sick, but rather this meant that she was consumed with rage and anger. When the Bible talks about a fever, it doesn't talk about coming down with pneumonia or some other bacterial infection which causes a fever in your body. When the Bible talks about having a fever, it means you are boiling inside of you with resentment and anger and ill feelings and, and you're feeling sorry for yourself and you're consumed by hate towards other people. You are in a depressed state. That is why the first reading for today is from the book of Job. When Job, who has lost everything, including all of his children, he is consumed by grief. His life is filled with suffering and problems. That is why the, the Bible today gives us Job... And Job is feeling sorry for himself. And he's saying, is, is man's life on earth not all but drudgery? Is it not all just suffering? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade. A hireling who waits for his wages. And, and Job, in, in his depression at looking at all that has happened to him, says, I have been assigned months of misery. Troubled nights have been allotted to me. When shall I arise? When will all of this be over? Why is it that the night drags on? When the Bible talks about the night, it's talking about a, a, a state of anxiety and fear and worry, a state of total depression where you feel like you just can't go on. That's the life that... Job experiences, and that is the life that so many of us experience at one time or another. And we, we find ourselves saying, when will this come to an end? We find ourselves without hope. That is why Job is saying, my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. I shall not see happiness again. Do you find yourself saying that from time to time in your life? Particularly during a time of the pandemic when you find yourself saying, when will this end? I've lost my job. I can't pay my bills. It seems like, you know, there's one negative news cycle after another. One earthquake after another, maybe even a personal earthquake. You go through a divorce. You lose a loved one. You find out your husband or your wife is cheating. You find out your child is on drugs. Or you lose a loved one, particularly during this time when there's so much death. Even during this time when so many people have lost loved ones due to COVID. One thing after another, isn't it? Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases we hear today. As people of faith, we are to experience what Simon Peter's mother-in-law experienced. She's lying in bed. When people are depressed, that is why this fever isn't a physical fever as much as it is a mental fever, an emotional fever. She is consumed. It's a debilitating fever that is not allowing her to get up and live. Depression does that to you. When people are depressed, they don't want to get out of bed. 
They just want to lie there in bed and maybe eat ice cream, feeling sorry for yourself, being consumed by all that is around you and in you and saying, when will this end? She lay sick with a fever. And why, why is it that she is sick in bed? Well, we can only imagine she is a woman during those times. Women without men couldn't live. A woman had no rights. That's why women needed a man in their life during that time. And she is abandoned. Simon just gets up and, you know, can you imagine your, your son-in-law all of a sudden finds a Messiah, an itinerant preacher, and he leaves you to go off with him because he's found himself? She's angry. Her problems in life have to do with the people in her life that have brought the problems upon her. Isn't that like that in our own lives? The problems in our life are caused by the people in our life and so often by the people closest to us, our family members. Who is it that has caused you the most grief, the most betrayal, that has abandoned you? your husband, your wife, your kids. The people you love the most are the ones who hurt you the most. That is her experience. And then he has the audacity to bring this Messiah that he's found to her house. And not only to, to her house, but he's also brought a crowd to her house. I mean, can you imagine this? She is angry. And in her anger, in her depressed state, finds herself in bed. And the Messiah approaches her as he wants to approach us who may be lying in bed Maybe that's where you're finding yourself right now, listening to me. You're in bed. You may have suicidal thoughts. I can't live this life, you say to yourself. Well, she felt the same way. You look at all that is facing you every day. It's like a continuous night. And you're saying to yourself, when will this end? And Jesus approaches her as he wants to approach you. And what does he do to her? The same thing he wants to do to you. He extends his hand to her. Which in that time, in this culture, when a man extends his hand to a woman, he's saying to her, you are a princess. You are royalty. That's what you are. In your baptism, you became royalty. In fact, when we are baptized, we are told that we become kings and queens. You are a princess. You are a king. You're a prince. That's what Jesus wants to tell you right now. You who may be laying there feeling sorry for yourself, all depressed, all anxious, all gloomy, all dark, all filled with anxiety and fear and worry. Jesus wants to approach you as he approached Simon Peter's mother-in-law and says, come on, get up. Get up. Arise from the state that you find yourself in. Here is my hand extended to you. That's what God does to us. He extends his hand to us sinners. Us depressed people, our, us anxious people, us worried people, us fear-filled people, and says, here, take my hand. That's what he did to her. It's all going to be okay, he said to her. I'm here. Take my hand. You're not alone. I am with you. 
I am Jesus Christ, the king of the universe. Mm. And with me you will reign as well. For the kingdom of God is within you. I have brought you the kingdom. I am hope itself. I came to drive out each and every demon that wants to keep you in bed. That doesn't want you to live. That doesn't want you to be happy. That doesn't want you to have joy in your life in the midst of your darkness. Take my hand, he says to her, and take my hand, he says to you, in whatever state you find yourself in, and get out of that bed, he says. Get up! And he helped her up, the Bible says. She was all down, and he wants to help you up today. Because life isn't all drudgery. Life is filled with problems. What are you going to do about it? Bury your head in your miseries? Or are you going to look up and say, God is with me. And if God is with me, I can do all things. For no one can be against me. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And with him I can do everything, for there is nothing impossible with God. Everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Yeah, it's all going to be okay because God is with us. Jesus validates her. He says to her with this gesture, you are important. Your feelings are important. That's what he wants to do to you today. He wants to tell you, you are important. You are a princess. You are a prince. You are a king. You are a queen. You are all that. All that. You mean so much to me, Jesus wants to tell you, so much that I don't want to live without you. That's why I died for you. God died for you because he did not want to live without you. That is the glory of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the good news that you are not alone. That hand of yours is extended to you. That hand of God is extended to you. So, Take that hand and, and, and extend it to him because he wants to lift you up. Jesus validates her and tells her, all that you are feeling is normal. Yeah, life is tough. Of course it is. You don't have it easy. Whenever somebody comes to me and says, Father, I have all of these problems. And I don't tell him, well, look at other people, you know. They have it worse than you. No. Stop that. Your problem is the biggest problem in the world. And you know why? Because it's your problem and you are living it. That is why it is the biggest problem in the world. And if somebody wants to tell you it isn't, stop listening to them. Your problem is the biggest problem. Face it. Yeah, but you can do it. Alone you can't. But with Jesus you can do all things. And you will be just fine. You are not facing those problems alone. He is facing them with you. He hears you. Jesus hears you. He knows what you are going through. He is with you. You are in his hands. We are about to celebrate Mass in just a little bit. Mass, where we take the bread and the bread is changed into the body of Christ. What is the body of Christ? You are the body of Christ. Look at yourself. Yeah, this is Jesus' body. You are the body of Christ. And at Mass, the priest, before he blesses the bread, and turns it into the body of Christ. Because you know, at Mass, we come to receive what we are hoping to be. We are receiving the body of Christ to be turned into the body of Christ. And the priest, before he blesses the bread, what does the Bible say? The same thing Jesus did at the Last Supper. Before he blessed the bread, the Bible says he broke it. He broke the bread. 
and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, for this is my body broken for you. Now you understand? You are a blessed body of Christ, but you are broken. Yeah, you are broken. You are wounded. You are filled with stuff in your life. Your, your life is full of problems. You have anxieties. You have fears. So what? Everybody does. It's called life. But you are called to live your life. Because the Bible says Jesus did what with the bread before he said this is his body and before he broke it? What did he do? Jesus took the bread. Where? In his hands. He took the bread in his hands. Now you understand it? You are a broken body of Christ. You are broken. You are filled with problems. You have suffering in your life. You have anxieties. You have worries. You have fears. You are depressed. You have grief in your life. You've been betrayed. You've been wronged. You have all of these bills. You are sick. You have a disease. You have all this stuff. There's COVID all around us. But you are where? You are in the hands of Jesus. You are in God's hands. And so you may be broken. You may have cancer flowing in your body. There's COVID all around, but you are in his hands. And that means everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Because you are in his hands. You're not in a politician's hands. You're not in the hands of a demon. You're not, you're not in the hands of the world. You're not in the hands of your boss at work. You are not in the hands of anybody except in the hands of Jesus. That's whose hands I'm in. And that's why everything is going to be all right. I will be okay because I am in God's hands. I may be broken, but I am blessed. I want you to repeat that with me today. I may be broken, but I am blessed. Who says that with me right now? Why don't you comment right there and say, I may be broken, but I am blessed. And I am blessed because I am in his hands. And if I'm in his hands, everything is going to be just fine. I can go through that surgery. I can go through that sickness. I can battle that problem. I can live with that addiction. I can do it all. I can do it all. Because I am in his hands. And that's why I am blessed. That's what we are to say today. He helped her up. He said, take my hand. And she got up. She got up. And what did she do? The Bible says she waited on him. She served. She began to serve them when she got up. Now, if somebody can't walk and they begin to walk, what do we say about them? We say, well, they couldn't walk. They didn't know how to walk. And now all of a sudden, they are able to walk. So if the Bible says that she began to serve, which means her sickness, I'm speaking right now, her sickness was that she did not know how to serve. Now are you understanding this? Her fever. Oh, I, I feel the Holy Ghost right now in my body. Woo. Her fever was caused. Her depression. Oh, her anxiety. I can feel the Holy Spirit was caused by the fact that she did not know how to serve. I'm giving you a recipe right now to get you out of your fever, out of those suicidal thoughts, out of that depression, out of that sorry, gloomy, dark state that you may be feeling in your life. I'm giving you a recipe. What's the cause of depression? That you don't know how to serve. In other words, get yourself busy. That's what the Bible is telling us today. She got up and she began to wait on them. Because you're so focused 
on all that's wrong in your life. Get out of that bed and start getting busy cleaning your house. Do the dishes. Start cooking. Cook a, make a pie for your neighbors. Uh-huh. Wait on those in your house. Stop saying all the time what's wrong with your husband or what's wrong with your children. Do things for them. Go wash the windows. Get yourself out of bed. That is the recipe to get out of, of depression. Join a, a dance studio. There's like ballroom dancing. I have friends who, who uh, go dancing. Yeah. Go dancing. Join a, a, a club. Get yourself into a group. Do something. Do something for others. Oh, I can't. Pray for other people. Call people that need a phone call, that need a good word. Do something. My grandmother, she can't do much, but you know what she does all day? She's knitting, making socks. I have all these socks that she makes. She's making pierogi. I, I have pictures. I'm, I'm, I'm going to post them of my grandmother right now making pierogi, which are these Polish dumplings. And she does it for family members. Uh, the whole town had COVID. She got over hers. She, you know, she had COVID too, my, my grandmother. She was sick. She was down for like a month. Lost like 30 pounds. And as soon as she got out of that, she started baking. And she baked bread for other people. She did things for others. That's why she says, you know, I don't have any time for depression. Because I'm doing things for others. That is the biblical recipe for getting yourself out of a sorry state. Of feeling sorry for yourself. Because you, you're, you're spending all your time focused on all that's wrong in your life. Start being focused on what you can do for other people. That is what Jesus is calling us to be. We are, you, know, when, uh, you know the way that we are going to get into heaven? Is when we get there. And God is going to not recognize us but recognize his son, Jesus. That is the way to make it to heaven, to become Jesus' twin, so that it's no longer me who lives and me who moves, but it's Jesus who moves. That's why Paul says, I became all things to all people when I preached the gospel. I became Jesus to other people so as to win over the weak, to save at least some for the sake of the gospel. I became all things to all people. May be ridiculous to some, but that I became Jesus. And they laughed at Jesus. They mocked Jesus. But nevertheless, he, he became a slave to other people. That is what the, 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 the gospel is calling us to do. We are to imitate the saints, particularly our blessed mother. And what did she say? Behold, I am the handmaid. I am the slave, the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your will. She became a servant. She thought about other people. That is the recipe in this life for happiness, for joy, to become an other-centered person, not a me-centered person, but a other-centered person that when I focus on myself, on my own ills, on my own sickness, I get depressed. Because I'm, all I'm seeing is all that is around me rather than seeing the beauty around me. All that I can do for other people. Jesus got down on his knees and washed the disciples' smelly feet. Do that in your own house. For your husband, it's, it ain't easy. For your wife, it ain't easy. For your kids, it ain't easy. For all those around you, it ain't easy. You think it's easy for me? No. No. To deal with all sorts of crazy people. Yeah, there are, you know, those two. I mean, if I started telling you, you think it's easy? It ain't. But that's how I deal 
with my own depressed feelings or anxious feelings or worries. I mean, we all have that in life. Jesus said, I have come among you as the one who serves. The one who serves, not the one to be served. And he got down and he washed the disciples' feet. And then he said, do this in memory of me. See, it's easy to come to church and to, you know, just uh, focus on the fact that we have to remember to break the bread and uh, uh, share the cup and that Jesus says, do this in memory of me. But we forget the other memory that happened at the Last Supper, which is that Jesus washed the disciples' feet. And then he said, if I, your Lord and Master, get down on my knees and wash your feet, you are to do likewise for one another. What is that? You are to do likewise for one another. That basically is saying, do this in memory of me. You want to be my disciple? Deny yourself, Jesus said. Take up your cross daily. And what is your cross? Your family, your marriage, the problems you have in your life. Get up and start living is what Jesus is saying. Abraham is a perfect example of that in the Bible. Abraham was feeling all sorry for himself. He was all depressed, you know? He was like, oh, I can't live my life. You know, I can't. my wife is old. She can't have kids. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> He was all depressed and feeling sorry for himself, all locked in in his tent, in himself, in other words. The book of Genesis tells us. And then he sees visitors in the background coming. And he gets up, and he goes, and he prepares a feast for them. He gets busy doing things for them, and that's how happiness enters his life. He gets out of his depressed state. And then God sees his hospitality, his goodness, his service. And God says, at this time next year, because of how generous you were, you will have a son. And Isaac is born the following year. Because Abraham did things for others. That is what you have to do. That's how you will forget about all that's wrong. By doing things for other people. You are called to be a servant to others. To serve in the line of Jesus who came not to be served, but to serve. And that's who we imitate in our life. I want to end today by telling you the story that is always at the forefront of my life as a priest. I was in the seminary and me and my friend, we were in the car going like we did every single Saturday to the homeless shelter. And my phone rang, I'm in the car and I picked it up and it was somebody and they said, what are you up to? And I said, we, meaning me and my friend, we are going to the homeless shelter to feed the homeless. We are going to feed the homeless. And at that, my friend stops the car, yanks the phone out of my hand. And I said, what are you doing? And he says, you are not going to the homeless shelter to feed the homeless. You feed animals. You feed dogs and cats and cows and pigs. You are going to serve the homeless because you feed animals. You serve people. You feed animals, but you serve people. And I know what some of you are saying right now. Well, Father, you know, you're so right. You're so right. Uh-huh. And then what do you do in your house? Your husband comes home, and what do you say? He comes home after a long day at work. And what do you tell him? Sit down. I'm going to feed you. <laughs> with your kids too. Time to feed. Get the chow ready. Huh? It's about the attitude. 
Jesus wants to change your life, your family life, your church life, which means your, your ho home life because your, your home is a church. It's a domestic church. Jesus wants to change your life by changing. I'm speaking right now. Jesus wants to change your life by changing who? Your husband? I'm speaking by changing your kids? Jesus wants to change your life by changing you. By changing you. You need to be the change that you want to see in your life, in your home. Change your attitude. My king, welcome home. Here is your... Here is your... Ice cold beer <laughs> as you run to the refrigerator. <laughs> because I am a servant, for I follow the one who came to serve and not to be served. 